Today you're going to be using force diagrams drawn to scale in order to solve problems for forces in two dimensions. The first step is still going to be to draw the free body diagram for your problem. For this free body diagram, I'm actually going to start with the ramp that the book is sitting on. And as part of my diagram, I'm going to make sure to include a label for that angle. Next, I'll add a little rectangle to represent my book. And then I'll start adding the forces acting on that book. Gravity always acts straight down, so I'll do a nice straight arrow pointing downward. And I'll add a label for that that has the force of gravity, which is 25 newtons. And then the normal force always acts perpendicular to the surface. So I'm going to draw an arrow that sticks straight out from the ramp. When we were in one dimension, that force typically just went straight up. But in two dimensions, it's going to be angled along whatever the surface is. And then finally, I've got the force of friction. And the force of friction is always going to act parallel to the surface. So I'll have an arrow for that, just pointing straight up the length of the ramp. Next, I'm ready to start working on my scaled force diagram. The first thing I have to do is pick a scale. In other words, how many newtons will each centimeter represent? For this problem, it should work out pretty nicely if I use 1 centimeter equals 5 newtons. Well, it doesn't matter what force you choose to start with, I usually pick gravity. So, since 1 centimeter is going to represent 5 newtons, that means gravity needs to be 5 centimeters long. So I just draw a 5 centimeter long arrow pointed straight down, and then I need to add a label to remind myself that this represents the force of gravity. To add friction and the normal force to my force diagram, I'm going to have to figure out some angles. I like to do the normal force next, since it turns out that's a pretty easy angle to get. If I just extend the line for gravity upwards a little bit, it turns out that this angle right here is the same as the angle at the bottom of the ramp, 37 degrees in this case. If you want to go through the geometry behind that, just let me know. So I'm just going to rotate my protractor here, and then I'm going to use it to find 37 degrees. Usually what's easiest is to just make a little mark at 37 degrees, and then move the protractor out of the way. Then I'm going to take my ruler, I'm going to put zero at the tail of gravity, and then line it up along that mark, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw in my arrow for the normal force. Since this one's 20 newtons, I have to make it 4 centimeters long. So I'll move my ruler out of the way and add a label for that force. Now, since friction is parallel to the surface and the normal force is perpendicular, that means that those two forces must be perpendicular to, to each other. So now that I've got the normal force, it's going to be pretty easy to find the angle for friction. I'm going to just draw it in at 90 degrees to the normal. So I'll get my ruler in place. And then with my scale, friction will only be one centimeter long. At this point, all I have to do on my force diagram is draw in that along the edge of a ruler, that arrow that connects my starting point and my ending point to represent the net force. I can also check to see, does this make any sense? I know that the block is most likely going to experience a force down the ramp, and according to my force diagram, the net force does indeed go down the ramp. The very last thing I need to do is turn the length of that net force arrow into a number in newtons. The way I'm going to do that is just by taking my ruler and measuring how many centimeters long that is. I've got two centimeters, and I could do a quick factor label to convert that into 10 newtons.